Here's my next project. It's a, uh, I wanted to make a modern design, so this is a Mulvey Hill. It's by Jim O'Reilly. You can get the plans online. And the nice thing about the Mulvey Hill is the only limitation is that the wing is 300 square inches. So you can put in as much rubber as you want. So I think this will make a good project for radio control rudder only, which is what I'm doing. Um, so I already did the wing here. I'll show you that. The wing's all done. And the wing I covered with uh, poly span actually, which I thought worked really nice. I used Yuhu glue stick to stick it on and then I covered it with poly span and then I put about three coats of 50% thin dope. It sealed up really nice. Okay, uh, the other thing I had to do was the poly span is just white, so I mixed, um, I was going to use nitrate thinner, but I read online that doesn't mix that well with the dye, so what I did is I just used lacquer thinner, uh, and the nice part about that is you can just get it at your local hardware store. So I mixed 10 parts lacquer thinner, one part nitrate dope, and one part dye, and then I had to buy a little sprayer. I didn't have one, and I sprayed it on, and I thought that actually came out pretty good. It looks fairly nice. On the stabilizer, what I did is I used Polyspan Light, okay, uh, which is lighter. The only thing about that is it's also more porous, so I had to uh, put on four coats of dope to get it sealed, and then I painted it. The other thing is I shrunk the Polyspan before I doped it. I like to do it that way, and then when you dope it, it doesn't shrink that much. Some people mentioned it shrinks a lot with the dope, but I think that's because they didn't uh, heat shrink it first. Now I've also worked on the fuselage. I'll show you that. So uh, I'll show you the modifications I made. The rudder, obviously I want this to be radio control, so I had to put a little fin on it, okay? And I tried to keep it in the style of the design there. The tail boom is a 32nd inch balsa, and basically what I did is I made some round little cross pieces, put them on a tube and rolled it around that. I don't know if that's the best way to do it, but that's what I did. And then I covered it with some poly span as well and doped it so it'll seal up pretty nice. Now the fuselage is huge here. It's from a 4 inch by 36 inch sheet of 16th inch balsa. So I rolled that around a 1 and a quarter inch tube and then I glued the seam. And then the next thing I did is I got some uh, fiberglass, the thinnest I could get. And I put that on with some epoxy and that really strengthens it. Okay, and also after you get everything together, I know that I located some balance points. I put the pylon on here. I'm also now going to fiberglass the pylon because that's going to hold the radio control equipment. You can see I made cutouts for the switch and the equipment. I'll show you that next. And uh, so I think that really needs to be strong as well. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, paint the fuselage. I'll just use Krylon uh, black paint and spray it, see how that goes. And then we pretty much should be ready to fly. Okay, so I'm working on the prop here for the tube stake. So basically what I did is I used the form to get the shape. And I sawed it and sanded it a little bit. Sometimes people leave the tips until the end, but uh, I wanted to put it in now. I made some marks of where I'm to help me carve, and then I'm going to use these. These are from the plan. You can see on one of them I kind of laid it out. It's very light in pencil. It's probably hard to see. And that's basically where I have to carve from. The other thing I did is this uses three quarter inch balsa, but uh, what I did is I got two three eighth inch sheets and I glued them together. It's hard to see because uh, the seam is very nice and tight. And uh, now I'm going to get carving. Okay, so here we're carving the blade and you should carve the bottom first, which is what I did here. And you can see I got to within about an eighth inch, maybe a sixteenth inch of the the line. I don't like to go much closer than that because if you slip then you'll ruin the prop. And it's pretty easy to sand it down so you got to make sure it's nice and flat or if you want to put a little under camber in. And then when you're done with the bottom that sets the pitch and all you got to do is carve the top so that it's the right thickness. And uh, here's the other blade. So I already got this one done for the most part. Okay so these are ready. Uh, I'm going to put a little 64th inch reinforcement on the hubs on the top and the bottom and then I gotta drill them I'll show you that and then I'm gonna put some coats of dope on them and uh, we'll be well on our way with the prop okay here's the prop for the tube stake now one thing I did different is he just shows a 32nd ply on the inside but I put a, 30, a 64th ply on both the inside and the outside okay I used a wheel retainer spring to hold the prop on and you can see I put a little stop here so that way the 
blade opens and at the right angle. Now also to do the blade, I uh, used a little jig that's shown on the plan. And basically you can put the blade on here, it holds it at the right angle. And then there's a little brass tube here. You use that as a drill guide so you can drill it at the right angle. Okay, you can see the hub here is very simple. It's just uh, silver solder. The silver solder is a little bit stronger and that has to be a strong connection. It has a little spring and bowl bearing and then it has a little stop here. I still have to put the screw in and I'm going to do that when it's in the plane to make sure it folds nice and flat against the sides. On the blades, you know, some people like to paper the blades or silk the blades, but I just like the look of regular plain old balsa. So what I did is I put on uh, dope. It takes a bit. I put on six coats of 50% thin nitrate basically, but I thought that came out pretty nice. Okay, and if you get all the angles right then it'll fold nice and flat against the uh, fuselage. Basically it's a pretty big prop. It's 22 inches. So we'll see how this goes. Okay, I'm making the motor now for the tube stake. Here's a box of 1 8 inch rubber and the motor is going to be 28 strands, 4 feet long. You could probably make it four and a half feet because the fuselage is three feet, but I think four feet is enough for sport flying. Now you can just put two nails in a board and do it that way, but I'm using this little jig I got from Starling Flight Tech. You can find them online at uh, freeflight.org. It's pretty nice. So I've set it at four feet. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make three loops with uh, eight strands, that's 24 strands, and then one more loop with uh, four strands to get up to 28. We'll see how that goes. Now the main thing you have to pay attention to is you have to make sure all the strands are exactly the same length. I've seen some videos online where you can see people's motors are hanging all over the place, they're all uneven. And that's bad because, uh, you know, you don't get the same tension on each of the loops and it's very inefficient and you lose power. So you really want them to be all exactly the same length. So what I do is I leave it a little loose. If you make it tight then when you take it off they're going to be uneven. So I, I have a little bit of slack in it. And then what you can do is you can keep adjusting it to make sure that they all have exactly the same amount of slack. And then you get a nice even motor like I did here. And the way I do that at the end is first I start with an overhand knot and that slides easily if you put on the ends. So you can pull on the ends and it'll tighten a little bit or you can loosen it a little bit. And I spend a little time and then when I get it exactly right, all the strands have about the same amount of slack like this. Then I finally tie it. Uh, with the square knot on top of the overhand knot and that prevents it from moving anymore. I've never had a, one of these knots uh, become undone. The overhand knot pushes on the square knot and just tightens it even more so it's a very nice knot. Okay so what I'm going to do, this is one loop of eight strands. I'm going to make two more and then a four strand motor and then I'll show you the insertion stick I made to get it into the tube stake. Okay, so here's basically the motor done. I bought a uh, pound of eighth inch rubber, so that came in handy. And here's the motor. I ended up using four loops of uh, eight strands each. So it's a 32 strand, one eighth inch motor. And I'm doing that because, you know, the radio control equipment weighs another round, so a little extra power isn't gonna hurt. And basically what I did here, as you can see, it's all, I really took my time and tried to make it all very even length. That's very important really takes it's a bit of an art form to do that. Here on the end what I put is this is called a Maxwell stirrup. You can get this from Campbell's Custom Kits and other places and it's nice because I like to leave it on the rubber. It helps to hold it together. Also on the other end I usually put a little rubber band to tie it and hold it all together. So this is the four foot motor and uh, this is ready to go. Okay, here's the tube stake. I put a little rubber band on the prop to stop it from flopping around. So I just used Krylon paint to make the fuselage black. Uh, and uh, you know, this is the first fiberglass fuselage I've done, so uh, I need some practice, that's for sure, but I didn't totally mess it up. It's not too bad. I also fiberglassed the pylon there, and I'll show you that. And uh, I put a little push rod on the rudder here. I think it has enough throw and here's a little rod and that goes into where all the radio equipment is. Now what I did here is I used, uh, you can see the servo there, it's a feather servo, weighs about six grams and there's the battery, the battery weighs uh, well that's kinda heavy actually, about a half an ounce, it's a 200 milliamp life battery 
And as you can see, I just ended up using a rubber band just to hold it in place. Everything is in there nice and solid. Now you can't see the receiver, you see the antenna coming out, but the receiver's in the front there. And basically for the receiver, I've used this, which is the high tech Minima. And uh, the reason I use this is because it's a full range receiver, and that's important. Full range means you'll have like a mile range, so as long as the plane's in sight, you'll have it within range. If you use a park flyer receiver, those only have a range maybe 600 feet, so with a large job like this, just when I need control, you know, it's in a thermal, I'd be out of range. So I wanted to make sure I used a full range receiver. All right, I'll show you the uh, stuffing stick I made for the motor and the box. I'll show you it boxed up and then we'll be ready to fly. Okay, here's the box I made for the tube steak. Now the box had to be 52 inches long in order to get the wing, but you know, it didn't have to be very wide. It was actually only 10 inches and I was uh, able to make the whole box from one uh, piece of 48 by 60 uh, cardboard. So there it is. You can see I made very simple uh, holder here for the stab and wing. I also put a little stop so this can't slide around too much. And the wing just slips in there as well. Uh, for the fuselage what I did is I put uh, velcro straps here like that. So you could just put that right in. One in the front, one in the back. Okay. And so everything fits in there real nice and we're ready to go to the field. Now a couple other things is, although I had an insertion stick for this, it's only 34 inches, so I had to make one. So I made this with the dowels, here's the front, where you uh, put the rubber on. And basically what I did is I made it in two pieces. I put a screw on there and there's a coupler in there. So you can just screw this on there and uh, get a good 36 inch length. I had the same problem with the puller stick. This is for the blast tube, okay because this is like 34 inches so what I did is I just made a little extension you can hook on to the end and uh, get more than 36 inches again and I've got the rubber ready to go you can see the Maxwell stirrup is on there okay you just hook that to the front of the prop alright and I actually I'm gonna load the motor before I go to the field and uh, then we'll be ready to fly Oh, the plane in total weighed six ounces, and so with the radio equipment and the battery is another ounce. So without the motor, the total weight is seven ounces.